Six games to go, Brian Robson called me into his office. He said, go on holiday for two weeks. Go on holiday, recharge your batteries, get ready for the playoffs. And I was like, no, we've still got a chance. We've got a chance. And I remember me, Gazza, Jimmy and my brother used to live together in, in a hut and rugby. And my mates were all QPR fans, like a lot of them. And they went up to the Sunderland game. I think it was on a Friday night. And I think they beat Sunderland that night at QPR. And I think that was the shock result that sort of swung it back in our favour again. I think we won five and drew one of our last six games. It was a really scrappy game, that really scrappy game. That they had some, they just got way out into it, simple as that, and we're winding them up. And it, I just remember the game, and they, I think Gaz had done a lovely bit of magic. It wasn't quite falling forward in front of the in front of Golden no who we had on the pitch at the time. And then Gaz crosses the ball, and I think uh, I think it was Hamilton. He's, he's tried to control it, and it's gone under his foot, and it just felt to me just lovely. And I've ended up smashing it into the far corner. And, See, I think once we get, got with nose in front in games, we knew we were going to win it. Getting sent off? Yeah. Was that my sending off? My one and only sending off? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and, and another flash point. Well, he was hauling back Vickers, and Vickers there reacted in a. Oh, this is getting ridiculous, Rob. It's red! I was disappointed in myself because. Um, that was my first sending off for my whole career. Um, it was a little bit. Was it Lee Bradbury? I think who got hit the floor like a you know ton of bricks. Um, big out centre forward. But yeah, it was just one of them things. A heat of the moment thing where we both went head to head, and he ended up on the floor for some reason. I don't know why. He just threw himself off. Anyway, yeah, the referee sent me off. Disappointing. I, I, I let the lads down a little bit, but um, I think we. Uh, I learnt my lesson from that, and then, you know, it's uh, it's not bad just having one set enough throughout a near, near of 20 year career. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. You know, backs against the wall, attack after attack. You know, they put us under pressure. They were trying to get back into the game, and I think I played right back that day, I'm sure I did. I remember I'm trying to think, coming into the box, and, you know, you, you, you've got to be careful because if you, if you lunge in, you're going to give a pen away, you've got to be careful, you've got a time. You could hear the fans. It was a one game, I would say, where the fans, you could hear them in terms of, come on, close him down. You could hear the voices, whereas on other games, you couldn't. It was a, it was a game where you're winning and you have to hold on to that lead, and, and we did. Friday night, I think that was the Port Vale game. You know, it's... Well, added that's Predators that night and scored first couple of minutes. And literally we hung on. Port Vale were good that day. You know, and everybody wanted to beat Middlesbrough. Everybody wanted to beat Middlesbrough. First attempt. I sort of knew it was going to be my last game. Um, not for definite, but I'd, I'd had a fair inkling that it was going to be my last game. And, and all I wanted to do was 
was go out the way I wanted to go out. I know I worked out it 320 times, I think I played for Borough and you think about atmospheres. And um, I think about that day fondly. I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I loved the game against Liverpool when we played and we drew three each. But on that day, there was a tension, but there was a joyous tension. There was a stadium, was when we came out to warm up, it was buzzing. There was balloons everywhere, it was like buzzing. Like, like, and you're like, whoa. And you do get edgy, I was a bit nervous sometimes, you know, but that's fine, it was not going to be, it's a big game. But we'd worked that hard to put ourselves in a position at home to get promoted back up after all the, you know, the feelings of the end of the season, the previous season, which were horrible. We had a chance. It, it was tough for me because I'd missed two previous games because I'd, I'd had the back injury and the physio had been working with us constantly. And my season was probably done because I remember the, there was a Port Vale game away where we were 1-1-0 and I'm lying on, at home just trying to relax me back. I just got told, just to, that's your season done, that was it. it was, I just remember coming into training on the Thursday and I, I just said to the manager, I said, look, your back feels great. I haven't done anything for two weeks. I feel great. And I spoke to the physio and I said, what do you think? I said, well, train Friday, a little bit on Friday and see what you feel like. And I'd done it and I, I didn't do the final bit because I could feel it stiffening up. But I said, look, I'd rather give it a go than not give it a go. So a few injections later and tablets later, they put us out before the game. And it was a big, big risk because I hadn't played for two weeks. And I remember speaking to uh, to Mark Gray, uh, who played for Darlington. Uh, if you remember, midfielder played for Sunderland, and he said, um, "And it's amazing how you perceive yourself." We, I thought we were a little bit nervy, but uh, I thought we were okay. We were up and at it. But um, his recollection after was brilliant because he said, "When I was stood in the tunnel, he said we're standing there and we're going, let's ruin the day." You know, let's ruin the day, that's their team talk, isn't it? Let's ruin the day, all the party bands are here, let's go and ruin the day. He said, he said, but I looked over, and he says, every one of has looked like 5, 10, 5, 11, chest up, going, right, we're ready. Well, here we go, we're going to war. Now, I didn't know that, and it was quite interesting when we spoke, and he didn't need to say that, he didn't make it up, but we were ready for action that day. Just a fantastic day. We all knew we were going to do it, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that we were going to turn Oxford over. You know, we just, the lads just had a good feeling about the, the day. And when Robbo had that much faith in us at that time, because everything I was doing was, was turning to goals, it, it just, he put us in there. And first half, I remember, it was nervous, very nervous energy around the whole place. Everyone, the final pass wasn't there, everything was getting rushed. And then I was probably feeling a little bit of, Took a couple more tablets half time, feeling a little bit of pain in the back, and he asked what I was like. I said, "We well, give us another 20 minutes and, and see how long I last." I think Oxford was nil nil at half time, and then we went into second, into probably fourth gear. Luckily enough, straight after half time, we banged two goals in from Merson, who was put the second one on the plate for his first one. I think I'll never forget the first one because it was just the longest run running through in my life because I seen the whole crowd stand up behind the goal. I'm running through and I've took it on my thigh first and the ball wouldn't settle so I've had to steady myself and compose myself as the defenders are running back. And I've just tried to hit it into the far corner and I've probably scuffed it a little bit more than anything else. But so you, you get taught as a kid and you know, shoot across the keeper, shoot across the keeper and I was fortunate enough it's gone right in the corner and the keeper had no chance of saving it. But as I said that, it's like time stood still as you're running through. You just knew the pressure was on your shoulders at that time. And, the moment it went in, it was it just you knew then the roof had took off from the whole place, and you knew we were going to win the game. And obviously, Merce again, he's he's ran down the lane, and just rolled one in for us. Sixty seconds later, and it was an easy tap in. That, that was my job done. It was time to come off. I'd, and I just remember getting loads more painkillers just to help us sleep on the night. Eh? I knew I was going to score that game. I knew 100% I was going to score, and to to have scored the first one here. And then in my last ever game to score two and get promoted, I, I couldn't have asked for my career here to, to finish any better than it did. You know, it's, it, for me, it was the perfect ending and it was all I could have asked for. I couldn't have asked for anything else, maybe a trick, but that would have been greedy. Um, to score two and to get the club that I loved back up to the Premier League, that was enough for me. I just think the final whistle um, was quite emotional, as I said to you, because at the start of that season, I was so hurting 
from the previous season, you feel like you've let everything down, you let yourself down and stuff. And then to get promoted back up, I think it's very, very difficult to do. It's a difficult thing to do because you've got to get over the hangover. Everybody wants to beat you. You've got lads leaving. What are you going to do? You know the fans might get disgruntled, they may not. Um, but it all culminated in that final whistle. And um, for me, it was unbelievable atmosphere. It was unbelievable. I absolutely loved it. And the funny, I always say to the lads, well, you know, all the games you play, you play them for days like that. And not every day is like that. You know, and there's not many days like that unless you're playing for the top, top clubs or you're, you're, you're consistently in the battle for league titles or whatever. You know, Middlesbrough never had a dull moment. We were always up and down, we were fighting, you know, relegation or we were getting wonderful players at a wonderful 10 seasons. But I'd love to be able to bottle that. I'd love to get that out now and again. I think it went for a while before we got out first and then we just went on. I think it was 4-0 the, the, the end result. But, um, you know, the afterwards, the celebrations and sharing the rooms and just being, you know, just being with the boys. Because when you are a footballer, th these are your family. You know, you you forget you've got a family back at home, but you, you're with these lads 24-7, basically, and you know them. And to, to achieve that and to get promoted was uh, such a fantastic just a fantastic feeling and you know you get you get to love football clubs and me personally uh, I had three clubs that I was at Southampton uh, Middlesbrough Darlington always look out for them football clubs because uh, they're set in your heart once you play for a cup for a club and it goes well in in yeah I'm with the club now so you know it tells you what I think about Middlesbrough for me, I was out injured for that last game. Um, if you see any of the pictures, the photographs, I'm the one with the black coat with a bottle of champagne at the side. So I was one of the first on the pitch with champagne. But yeah, it was great. I mean, I was so. I'm really a really bad watcher. It doesn't matter what game I go to. But um, yeah, I was a bit nervous for the lads. But I mean, we just we we, we battered Oxford really, um, and it was great at uh, at the end. But we got what we deserved, which was promotion again. I remember uh, the last game uh, when uh, when we we you know, were sure that we achieved the, the, that the, that great result. Uh, my feeling was amazing. It was a very very much, and that keep me bound very much to the this club. The, the season didn't end. Uh, well, it ended as I wanted it to do because you know with the promotion, but it didn't, it, I didn't play that role towards the end of the season as I wanted, and I, which I felt I had served. Uh, so it was a bit, a uh, bit strange. But um, you know, when when the promotion was uh, was was there, uh, you, you started looking forward to the next season. So, so um, you know, that's that's I, I suppose that's how that's how us uh, human beings we do. You know? And the group of lads that we've grown very very close together. And I remember the party after with the lads was was good crack uh, with a few. A few daft lads as well, didn't we? You know, so it was there. Uh, so it was, uh, but it was, it was good. That's what the season's all about, and I think it was brilliant for the club, brilliant for the gaffer, um, and, and brilliant for some of the lads. You know, I just think, you know, some of the lads. I remember Craig Harrison. You know, was, was around. Stevie Baker was only 18, 19. Stampy. You know, you got all these lads. You know, young boys that were experienced and that, and they went on to have you know great careers. So for me, it's 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 one of my best, if not my best day that last day because I just think of the history and what built up to us getting back up that time because I think the, the previous season had a, a major effect on us. I got promoted in Stockport and but then to get promoted in the Premier League and, and seeing score them two goals it was, it was huge for me and I'll never forget that because being from the North East you know what it you know what it means to people from the North East and to be able to do that was massive for me. We had a choice. I think Robo had said to us, um, "Do you want to go away, lads?" And we said, "Yeah." Well, I just wanted to go in the sun and chill out, go somewhere, you know, Spain or somewhere like that. And then Andy Townsend and um, Paul Gascoigne said, "No, oh, let's go to New York." I said New York's a great place, but it's obviously you're up and about and walking around and that. And I didn't want that type of ball. And most of the lads didn't. I think most lads just wanted to sit down, chill out, have a few beers, get a bit of sun on the backs and, uh, yeah, just relax. But we ended up going to New York. No, I think, I, as I say, I had the back operation. I was in on the Wednesday 
but I think for two days I was, um, I can't remember. It was just one of them, it was two days of straight out. I, I remember being in the Purple Onion at one stage and lying on the floor because my back was in bits and people were just serving us drinks. And it, it was it's that kind of thing, it was so surreal. You had all these superstars here, as I say, and it was, it was just a, gone from Stockport to the plane, like going out with the, was it the celebrities at the end of the day, the Billy like Gaza and that and Merce and that, it was just so surreal. I think we got to, got the airport and got out, we had all our bags had packed, got the airport and there was a few that was worse for wear to be fair, I must admit, and then we get to, we flew to Amsterdam and we were getting worse. <laughs> and then we got on this plane to New York, oh, my word, oh. It was, it, it was a celebration, I'll tell you that now, but it had, it had gone the night before, all the way through the next day, the flight to New York, and then we got off the bus, we got off the plane, sorry, and then we got, the ho got to the hotel, and we thought, right, bags down, let's get out, lads. So we, we, got, this, we got in this taxi, and we stopped out of this bar, and the lads got out, <sighs> take me back to the hotel. I was shot like I was in it. <laughs> I thought, oh, I can't. so I went back to the hotel and, and got a good night's kip. Like, but uh, yeah, New York was uh, an experience. It was a, uh, it was a good time. First time I've ever been there, but uh, we certainly celebrated, and uh, a togetherness which we all we, we always had. It was a good togetherness from the group. We all went and uh, we had a fantastic time there. It was uh, from our it's a bit of a blur, but um, we did. We stayed in a nice hotel. Um, yeah, flown across there. It was it was it was good. It was it was nice of the club to do that, and we had a good time, had a good laugh, let off a bit of steam, um, and came back ready for the for the following season. I see. We went to New York because Steve Gibson gave us as a bonus to go to New York. But English people <laughs> stay in the pub all the time, even in New York. But me and Mark Black, we went around to see the city. But the English English players stay in the pub. And they play golf. <laughs> so, so that, there we split. We split our group. <laughs> yes, but there's a problem with that. I never went. So I fell out with Robbo about this because I damaged my finger. Right, I damaged my finger. Right, it's still not great. Right, it's still not great. But it shouldn't stop you going <laughs> to New York to celebrate. So they they said, oh, just something to tell you that you can only do the operation on your finger, and we don't do it, we can't get it done, so you won't be back in time for pre-season. So they never let me go. And, you, and I don't know if it was mobile or what it was that was going on, but I was getting a few messages. So let me know how good it was <laughs> over there. So they all went, and I just reminisced quite a bit about it. He goes, they were great, weren't they? I keep going, I wasn't there. <laughs> so uh, not that I feel bad about it, I feel that it hurt me at all at the time, but uh, no, I never made it, but I had a good few beers on the build-up to before we went, so it was good. I think, uh, how many days, Jaluka? We stay in New York, four days. Uh, never sleep. <laughs>